Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. Now till this point we have talked about NumPy, right? But there is still one question. We have talked about NumPy 3 to 4 videos before and then the reason we started with NumPy is by talking about multi-dimensional array. And till this point we have not touched it, you know. So that's the awesome thing about NumPy. Other than multi-dimensional array we have so many features, right? But in this video, finally we are talking about multi-dimensional array. Now what is multi-dimensional? So we have seen the theory, right? We have one dimensional, we have two dimensional, we can create three dimensional. Now with that I want to perform certain operations, right? So in this video we'll talk about two dimensional and what, what operations you can perform here. Okay, so let's create a two-dimensional array. Okay, so we got an array and then since with the moment you say you want to create multi-dimensional array, you need to use this symbol, right? So this is one array, so this is one big array which you have and inside this one big array you want two different arrays and that's the idea, right? If you have one array with multiple elements, that's one array. If you have a big array, inside that array you have arrays itself that is multi-dimensional or two-dimensional array, right? So this one, this is one big array, right? And in this one big array, you have two more arrays. So you will say, we have two more arrays. And each array will have certain values. I would say one, comma, two, comma, three, right? And the second array will have four, comma, five, comma, six. So what we have here is, we have two dimensional array. Okay, now how do you know, how do you know that this is two dimensional? So if you have an array and if you want to check, first of all, let's, let's print the array as it is. I would say ARR1, run this code and you can see we got an array, so this is the output. So we got one big array, inside that we have two arrays. Now there are certain functions you can apply here. The first function is called as dtype. Now using dtype you can guess, uh, you, can know, you will know what type of data you are working with. So at this point we are working with int. We have another keyword or the attribute you can say which is ndim. Now ndim is dimension, which will give you the number of dimensions and you can see the output, it is two. So when you work with single dimension array, it will give you one. When you say three dimensional array it will give you three right so it will give you the number of dimensions you have and plus it is also called as ranking so it will rank so it is 1d array is it 2d array or 3d array now we have one more which is called a shape so i will say shape here now what shape will give you is let's run this so shape says 2 comma 3 now what it means it will give you the number of rows and columns so we have two rows and we have three columns so it will give you tuple with the number of rows and number of columns the other attribute we have is size. Now using size it will tell you the size of the entire block and you can, you can count it now. So we have 3 and 3 to be 6. So let's run and you can see we got 6. So there are other, so there are multiple methods you can use, right? In fact we have one function which is awesome. Example if I have an array which is ARR2 and I want to create another, I want to create this array 2 with the help of array 1 but this should be the, this should be 1D array. Uh, okay, so how can you convert a 2D array into 1D array? It's very simple. You say ARR1 dot. There is a function called as flatten. So the moment you say flatten, it will flat the array, right? So from two dimensional, you will get one dimensional now. And I want to print, of course, the ARR2. And if you're on this code, you can see we got one dimensional. So that's how you can create from multi-dimensional to single dimensional. How about from single dimensional to multi-dimensional? Because now this is, so ARR2 is one dimensional, right? I want to create three-dimensional. Uh, how can we do that? Now first of all to make it three-dimensional I want to have some more values of course then it will work right. Uh, let me say two again and nine. So we got six values here and let me take six values here as well because six plus six is twelve and it is easy to create a, a three-dimensional array when you have this number of values. So I will create array three and this should be a three-dimensional array. From, from one dimension I want to create a three-dimensional array. So you will say ARR2 dot the function name is reshape. So you can convert a single dimensional array into 3D array. Okay, but then what you have to pass here? So when you say you want to create 3D array, you need to pass the number of, so let's, let's try with two dimensional first and then we'll go for three dimensional. So I would say three here, I want to print three. Now you have to pass the number of rows and columns. So I would say I want three rows uh, and the number of columns will be 4, right? So we have 3 into 4, 12. So we have 3 rows and 4 columns. If I run this code, you can see from 1D array, we got 2D array. So we got 3 rows and we got 4 columns. Now, it is also a 2D because in an array, so the outer array has single dimensional arrays, right? Now, what if you have a big array in which you have 2D arrays? Okay, I know that's that's pretty difficult to understand, but let's try it out. So I will say 2 comma 2 comma 3. So 2 comma 2 comma 3 is 12, right? So 2 into 2 is 4, 4 into 3 is 12. Now what it will do is it will create a 3D array, 
Okay, big 3D array, and that 3D array will have two dimensional array. So it will be having two two dimensional array, and each two dimensional array will have three values or, or two arrays with three, three values. Okay, let me, let me run this code for you. So you can see this is what I'm talking about. It, it will give you a 3D array, and this 3D array will have two 2D array. So you can see this is one 2D array, this is two second 2D array, and each 2D array will have two array itself, two 1D array. Uh, to 1D array and then each 1D array will have three values. That's what you're saying. We got two, we got one big array which has two two-dimensional array, which has two row, two single dimensional array, and then which has three values. Okay, so that's what you have to say, and you got the you got the output here. So yes, this this is some functions you can apply to perform certain operations on 2D array. Now, once we talked about 2D array and some operations, the main thing about mathematics, you know, we have a concept. When you talk about arrays in mathematics, we have a concept of matrices. I'm sure you have, you have done that in your college, right? Now, when you talk about matrices, what is matrice? You can imagine a two-dimensional array, right? So we have multiple rows and multiple columns. Uh, now, we can have one row and multiple columns, right? We, we call them as row matrix. Right, or we can have a column matrix which has multiple rows but single column. But ultimately, you can represent that with 1D array, right? So, even if you have one row, one column, you can say that's 1D. What if you want to have 2D array or matrix format, you know, with multiple rows, multiple columns? We can do that here, right? In fact, the array, the earlier array which we were, which we were working with, this one, this is a 2D array, right? So, I will just remove all this stuff and I will put, I want to print one. And I don't want all these values here, let's reduce it. We can have two rows and four columns. So if you have this code, this is your matrix, right? But then to actually work with matrix, there are certain options we can perform. So you have to convert this 2D array into a matrix format. And the way you can do that is by saying matrix M is equal to, there is a function called as matrix. And in this matrix, you have to pass ARR1. So you pass a 2D array, it will give you a matrix format. Let's run this code. And this is your matrix. Oh, sorry, not this one. Let me print M. So this is your matrix. I know the output looks similar, right? Output is almost the same. What is different is with this M, you can perform more operations, the, the operations which we do in matrices. Now, this is not the only way of creating a matrix. Example, if you don't have a two-dimensional array, if you have a string with you, maybe you are, you, you are taking input from the user. In that case, you will pass, you will say, hey, I got a value one, I got a value two, I got a value three, and value six. Now, how can I differentiate between two rows here? You just have to give a, a semicolon at the end. And then again, you have to say four, comma, five, comma, six, comma, seven. And even this works. If I run this code, so you can say even this works. You don't need a separate array to save the value. You can simply run this code and you can say it still works. If you want to create multiple rows, I mean four rows and two columns, you can just give a semicolon after every two values. So this will convert it into four rows and two columns, right? So we got four rows and two columns. So let me just do some modification here because we want to perform some operations here. I will, I will say three rows and three columns. So you can see we got nine values. We have three rows and three columns. If I run this code, uh, this is what you got, right? Now there's a concept of diagonal elements. What if you want to have diagonal, diagonal element here? I don't want to print all the entire matrix. I just want to print the diagonal, which is one, four, seven. Uh, you can do that with a, with a function called as diagonal. Just say diagonal and pass M and you're good to go. You can see we got all the diagonal elements. So this is fun. So if you have metrics, you can perform these operations. In fact, not just this one. Uh, what if I want to, let's, let's try. So I, I will say m dot. So there is a function called as min. So you know the answer, right? So when you say min, it means the minimum element. So if I run this code, uh, that is your one, of course. And if you say max, it will give you the max element. So the operation which we do with array can be done with matrices as well. But with matrices, you get this amazing power. Now, if you remember, if you have done with metrics before, if you have worked with metrics before, we have this concept of adding to matrices. That is very easy, right? You simply have to add the elements. The problem starts when you want to multiply to matrices. Now, if you're thinking, if you want to multiply to matrices, simply take the values from here, simply take the values from here, multiply, uh, that's not the case. In multiplication of matrices, you have to do some rows and column combinations, right? If you remember your matrices, if you have not done that before, I would suggest you to watch my video on how to multiply to matrices. So you will find the link in the description area. But watch that video if you have not done that. And if you know how it works, how are you doing programming? Uh, in fact, if you have done C, C++, Java before, you know we have to use multiple loops to make it work, right? So if, you, if I ask you to, hey, do you need to multiply to matrices? 
go with C programming, you know, it will take entire one page. That's not the case with Python here. What Python says is, if you have two matrices, that's well and good. Uh, let's create another matrix here. Let's call this M as M1 and we got this is M2. We can change the values of course. I will, I will say this is 2, this is 8. Doesn't matter, you can have the same matrix or different one. I want to multiply this. It's very simple. You create M3 equal to M1 into M2. Now this is not a simple multiplication. Okay, first let's try with addition if, this, if that works. And at the end I will print M3. Okay, let's run this code and you can see it works. You, you are adding two matrices. It's, it's straightforward, right? You can, just see, you can just see the combinations there. But what if I say multiplication? Now this is not a normal multiplication. Okay, so if you see the output, it's not normal multiplication. It's not one into one. It is not two into two. It is something different. So this is where you add, you multiply row with column combinations, right? Now this is done automatically automatically in matrices and that's the that's the amazing th thing about uh, python we have so many stuff available right so i would suggest you do this manually also so as an assignment you can you can do matrix multiplication but manually now how will you know the uh, logic of it so in the description area there's a video in that i have talked about the theory of it how to multiply two matrices just look at that video and try to convert that into algorithm and try to convert that into a code in Python, okay, not using this simple multiplication. So that's it. That's how you multiply matrices. Uh, uh, let me know in the comment section if you have any questions. And if you are enjoying this video, let me know in the comment section as well. Uh, do click the like button if you're enjoying it. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Bye bye.